Always and forever, each moment with you is just like a dream to me that somehow came true. And I know tomorrow will still be the same. Cause we've got a life of a love that won't ever change and every day love me your own special way melt all my heart away with a smile Take time to tell me you really care And we'll share tomorrow together I'll always love you forever Forever all right, guys, Silver 5150 here, having a good time with Heat Wave 1977 release on, I think, Columbia Records. Um, nice R&B group, man. Just one of the best R&B love songs of all time. Probably been played a lot of weddings, probably a lot of children incepted because of it. But we are talking about Silver. And I'm not saying I love Silver, okay? Silver is simply an investment vehicle, is simply a savings vehicle, is simply an insurance vehicle. It could be Q-tips, it could be toothpicks. But it's silver because silver matters. Silver mattered back in the Bible when workers would get paid a denarius to work in a vineyard's a silver dime. These are silver dimes, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. They say tenths on them. And um, this is what the workers got paid back during the biblical times to work four days, hard human labor, 12 hours in a vineyard. 12 hours if you were a gladiator, 12 hours if you were a Roman soldier. You get your silver denarius, and you collect those throughout the week, and it was enough for your family to live and have a little fun. And I stole that from Greatest Truth Never Told. He's got a 10th ounce silver agrospedes over there at Silver Shield, if you want to check that out. I like all kinds of tents. And I do have some Walking Liberty tents that are, you know, mimic the U.S. Silver Eagles, but they are in a brick because I bought a 1,000 of them. And I don't want to take the brick apart to bring them out. So I bought out some other tents. I'm being lazy. I could have had another set of tents, but just these. So guys, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? I'm not saying that we've got the fourth turning going on, but it sure was good to win a little bit back today, wasn't it? Now, the only problem with that, of course, is that the premiums are not going to necessarily shrink with the increase in spot price. They sure expanded like hell when the spot price went down. But um, I think we basically are going to see relief only in that the retailers are not going to let the spot price climb away too far, in silver anyway, from the um, premiums. Well, they're not going to let the premiums expand too much. I mean, we'll stay within $20 range for a bit on uh, silver, you know, 20-ish, this sort of thing. Um, but I got to tell you, this is going to happen. We are going to get increases in silver, and they're going to be significant and substantial. I know I got a little Pollyanna over the weekend talking about buying coastal properties and you know and hiring people to work at companies and all this stuff. But the argument's not dead, okay? The argument's not dead. It just it's going to be incremental steps. It's not going to happen overnight. We're going to see these increases. We're going to see things improve in the price of silver, and we're going to love it. Something I love about these Scottsdale tents is they have these special you know, ridges on them, on the uh, spine there to distinguish them from other tents. You know, notice they have like four strikes on every, you know, section there along the sides. And then every other coin has just like regular reeds. And that's what they are, reeds along the side. And then the Somali elephants, they don't have any. So these are 2017 Somali elephants, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and get in close and depth. Yep, nailed it. 2017s. There's the elephant. And um, these are more fractionals, guys. These are more fractionals that I've been, you know, working with and trying to, uh, you know, get people to, you know, enjoy and whatnot. And, uh, you know, you can get them right now probably for about $2, $3 a piece. And that is going to, you know, really give you a lot of, what do you call it, uh, transactions. 
You want transactions. Transactions to, you know, purchase things you want to purchase. Transactions to exchange, say, four or five of these, maybe six of these, for a full ounce of silver. If somebody has a bunch of ounces of silver and they're getting tired of spending ounces because ounces are fetching a lot of purchasing power, um, you want to be able to trade some of these to them and, you know, increase your holdings, you know, ounce-wise and uh, make their lives convenient, too. So it's kind of like a win-win. All right. So I'm expecting more increases to the week. I don't know how far we're going to get, but um, I wanted to read a little excerpt from you to show you just, you know, what it means to us to be basically in a battle with the Federal Reserve. And what I mean by that, if you're a stacker, you're trying to you're trying to acquire real money and real money is gold and silver. Fiat currencies that are, have no backing, that have no backing by anything, they're not um, real currency. They are currency. They do function. They are currently the law of the land. They're not the law of the Constitution in the United States, but they're the law of the land. People use currencies. And that's all fine and good. And the Federal Reserve note it was not always such. So let me go ahead and read a little something I picked up and enjoy the coins while I'm talking. Um, this is from a guy named Richard Smith who was talking about an auction where a 100-ounce bar that was sold from the U.S. Assay Office um, fetched like $24,000 at this auction. It was a 100-ounce bar. And think about that. That's what... Um, $24 an ounce, I guess. Let's see. 100 ounce bar. Yeah. So yeah, $24 an ounce. No. $240 an ounce. $24,000 ounce. 20, okay. Okay. So, $24 an ounce, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, 100 ounce bar. Nope. Definitely $240 an ounce. Okay, we got it now. Sorry. Sorry about the math. Anyway. So Richard Smith explains the unglamorous transition from the United States Treasury silver certificates to purely Federal Reserve notes. All right. And he says, from 1935 to 1962, every $1 bill printed and placed into circulation by the Treasury had been a silver certificate, entitling the bearer, bearer to $1 worth of silver, which is 0.77 ounces, as the monetary standard of $1.29 an ounce. This is back between 35 and 62. Billions of notes bearing the silver promise have been printed during that time. Over $4 billion, in fact, from 1957 to 1962 alone, and even allowing that the vast majority of those who had been, had been replaced by newer issues as they were worn out, and there still were hundreds of millions of the silver certificates in circulation, even though some got worn out. In 1963, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing began cranking out the new series of $1 Federal Reserve notes, which were not silver certificates, the first Federal Reserve issue of that denomination since 1914 in an effort to replace the old silver certificates in circulation. Yet it still remained that there were plenty of silver certificates in private hands, each bearing a promise to pay a dollar's worth of silver upon request of the bearer. In fact, ever since the first issuance of silver certificates in 1880, they had been, both in theory and in practice, redeemable at the Treasury's cash window for silver dollars. Now think about that. You could take a silver certificate, which looked like a dollar kind of, and then it had like a blue seal and stuff on it. And you could take it up to the Treasury's cash window, which I think they had more than one branch throughout the United States, and get yourself a silver dollar. But with the supply of silver dollar coins in the Treasury vaults having been in drawn down from some 400 million coins in 1954, and I think these might have been the old Franklins and Eisenhowers, if I'm not mistaken, um, to fewer than 4 million coins. So that's a 99% drawdown. By the end of 1963, on March 25th, 1964... Treasury Secretary Douglas Dillon announced that the silver certificates would no longer be redeemable in silver dollars, only in silver bullion. Okay, which was a downgrade, but it wasn't a complete loss. And further, and in a further effort to end the Treasury's silver dealings entirely, because they wanted to get out of it. They wanted to go to the Federal Reserve notes where they have no limits on what they could spend. Um, it was decided to set a deadline for the redemption of silver certificates into actual silver. On June 4th, 1963, Congress passed an act allowing holders of silver certificates only until June 24th, 1968, so five years, to convert them to silver. After that date, the notes would still be legal tender, but the silver clause would not. So they could spend them as regular dollars, so, you know, um, Federal Reserve notes, but they would not be able to get, you know, a silver's worth of spending for them anymore. And that right there, folks, is called a currency revaluation, just not in those words, Okay. So, with this deadline in place, the race for redemption was on. A commercial trade sprang up in silver certificates. Newspapers across the country began running ads from dealers offering to pay $1.10 for each silver certificate, then $1.25 as silver prices rose. Get a load of that. Now, the notes were being purchased by aggregators, bundled, and sent to 
the only two facilities which were authorized to disperse or to dispense silver for the notes. The U.S. Assay Office, you guys remember those rounds I showed you, right? Those rounds, USA Assay Office rounds? Okay, that was part of that. Um, in New York and in San Francisco is where they had the assay offices. The Treasury Department had to honor the Silver Redemption Clause, but they had no incentive to make it easy or convenient for the citizens to convert their paper to silver. Silver, silver, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bear with me. The Treasury interpreted the law strictly and narrowly, a dollar's worth of silver at $1.29 per ounce on demand. Small holders were given little plastic bags containing more or less pure silver grains. <laughs> no coins, nothing fancy. For transactions larger than 100 ounces or so, the Treasury poured extremely crude silver bars of finest greater than 90% and of less than 99%. Okay, so, I mean, silver, silver. Today we know these bars as grease bars, unstamped and unrefined, right? These crude bars are recognizable because they have their weight written on them in grease pencil. Oh my goodness. These ungainly forms of silver were the embodiment of the Treasury's attitude towards the citizens who turned their silver certificates in for silver. Here's your silver, unmarked as to its origin, origin, weight, or fineness, and in essence, as unattractive and as unremarkable a product as can be legally produced. Wow, thanks a lot, Treasury. Yeah, thanks a lot, big government. However, um, a, few, a few USA assay office bars are known from that period that were stamped as to finest and origin. These bullion items were refined and configured to the specifications of good delivery bars of 99.9% .9 purity and weighing approximately 1,000 ounces each. And you used to be able to buy those, by the way. The good delivery bars, you used to be able to buy those in Atmex, you know, regularly. OK, um, if you had enough money to, to buy them, they were 49 cent over spot. They used to have them all over the place. A bunch of them. thousand ounce bars. They are a relic of the past, as much of a relic as the use of any credit card with no fees and free shipping and all that. that I was talking about yesterday. All right. Conjecture is that these refined bars were released to the largest redeemers of silver certificates. So these bars marked an assay to triple nine finest are stamped with the eagle insignia of the U.S. Assay Office, but have no indication of weight. And the estimated value, if you want to buy one of these bars today, which they're only, let's say, only 1,000 ounces, would be $27,000 and up. So let me go ahead and clear something up here. So yes, it was a 1,000-ounce bar that I said in the beginning. I said 100-ounce bar is a 1,000-ounce bar that sold for $24,000 at an auction um, back in the day. And so now if you want one of those bars, if you can find one, you know, they go for at least $27,000. But guys, this is what I'm talking about. We're embattled with a Federal Reserve and a central banking system that want nothing to do with precious metals as money because they know they can't stop precious metals as money. If Gershom's Law is allowed to take effect, meaning whatever they introduce as the next currency, or even if they blow this one sky high, people will find a way, the market will find a way to provide uh, purchasing power for the market, for, for the people that want to buy stuff. And people are going to start going and they're going to dig into their relics and they're going to find they've got some silver coinage. They're going to find they've got some gold coinage. And if they need something bad enough, they're going to ask around and find out where that money is going to be good. And that's how it's going to take hold. It's going to be organic. It's going to be natural. All right. If this is going on while the spot price is struggling with, you know, uh, the comics and all this, and if the comics blows while this is going on, there's probably 19 different things that could relate or cause or create um, a hyperinflationary circumstance in the purchasing power of silver, not the price of silver, the purchasing power. One of the debates I got in last night was comparing, you know, what silver would buy you back, you know, 120 years ago versus right now. And I'm saying, well, it changes over time. In the Bible, you know, um, good grief, it was the equivalent of $180, you know, for a tenth of an ounce. And, you know, back, you know, 100 years ago, it was probably the equivalent of, you know, two, you know, five or $10 an ounce, you know, but who knows? You got, you got to go back and you got to do that stuff. The bottom line is, is as long as silver's under $30 an ounce and you're able to get it, especially now that we're going to see some shortages and mines shutting down and we're going to, because of the coronavirus and because of, you know, um, the buying that's going on and the positioning people are doing, investing in things that are real versus the things that are not, stock market is still going down, by the way, then you can see why, you know, high premiums, but a full price under $30 is going to look like a bargain here in about two or three months. Okay, That's what I've been pounding the table about. That's what I was trying to paint the picture of. I was trying to get it in people's heads just how little worth the physical paper dollars have in terms of future spending. They work really well now, but when they go bad, they're going to go bad, and they're going to go bad fast. Okay, And you need to already have your other money in place when that happens. 
So I'm asking you, when you get out there, spend wisely. You know, make your money go as far as you can go. Get a good deal if you can get a good deal. I have nothing against that. But get some precious metals in your hands if you don't have none or if you don't have that much and you're able to get some more. Go ahead and get some. I'm not going to stop preaching about it. I'm not going to stop asking you to buy. I want you to buy because I want you to be prosperous. I don't want you to just get through this bug and uh, come out on the other side, you know, being um, enslaved to someone. I want you guys to come out, you know, I mean, just bright and shiny, smell like roses and can really, really kick butt in a new economy and do great things for your family and friends and, you know, and live a quality life because right now we're being asked to live a limited one. Okay. When all that energy breaks loose and people want to get out and it's safe to go out again and do stuff. I'm telling you, the money's going to be flying like crazy, and you want yours to be real money. Okay? Um, Thumbs up, share, subscribe, guys. Um, I will try to do a morning update, especially if the news is good for silver. (laughs) But until then, enjoy my rendition of Heat Wave, and enjoy these beautiful 10th ounce coins. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I think I'm going to keep these out for a bit, because I'm going to enjoy those. All right, guys? We'll catch you later.